All right, welcome to lesson four of module two, in which I'm going to introduce the different types of maintenance. And I say introduce because we're going to delve more deeply into these different types of maintenance in module three. But it's important to sow to see that there are different types of maintenance because you need to link these with the characteristics of failure modes, which is something we'll talk later about in this module. And so there are several key points I need you to take away from this lesson. First of all, at a high level, all maintenance is either preventive maintenance or corrective maintenance. And secondly, you need to remember that there is no best type of maintenance. Instead, you need to match the right type of maintenance with the characteristics of the failure mode you're dealing with. And you need to pick a type of maintenance that suits your objectives. Because if you don't, you're wasting time and money doing work that's not worth doing. Or worse, you'll experience failures that you should not be have experienced. Now, we don't really delve into the details of that second key point. That will be fleshed out as we go through the course. But as we discuss the different types of maintenance, it really is essential that to remember that there is no single best type of maintenance. And an effective and efficient preventive maintenance program will always consist of a mixture of the different maintenance types that we discuss in this lesson. Okay, so let's get started. So as I said, when it comes to the different types of maintenance, at the highest level, all maintenance is either preventive maintenance or corrective maintenance. It's a kind of embarrassingly simple, isn't it? But simple definitions are helpful. They're easy to remember and easy to align around. So when we do preventive maintenance, we're doing a task before a failure has occurred. Now that task can be aimed at preventing a failure, minimizing the consequence of the failure, or assessing the risk of the failure occurring. When we're conducting a corrective maintenance task, the failure has now occurred, and we're basically reinstating the equipment's functionality. Now, to be clear, corrective maintenance can also be the result of a deliberate run to failure strategy, so it can be something you choose to go for. Now, when I bring this down to the next level, it probably starts to make a little bit more sense in that you suddenly see all the different types of maintenance you're probably already familiar with. So preventive maintenance, that is the maintenance we do before a failure has occurred, can be split into five different types of maintenance. Time-based maintenance, failure-finding maintenance, condition-based maintenance, predictive maintenance, risk-based maintenance. And then corrective maintenance is essentially split into two different types, deferred corrective maintenance and emergency maintenance. Now, in the next few slides, I'm going to talk through each of these types of maintenance in a bit more detail. When people talk about preventive maintenance, they're really actually often referring to time-based maintenance. Time-based maintenance refers to replacing or renewing an item at a fixed time, interval, or usage, regardless of its condition. And that means every month, every 100 hours, or every 10,000 kilometers, you replace a part or you service it with the expectation that you significantly increase its reliability. And so time-based maintenance is only effective when you're dealing with failure modes that are clearly age-related. Or for dealing with um, compliance or regulatory requirements where you have a time commitment. Failure finding maintenance, on the other hand, is different. It, failure finding maintenance tasks are aimed at detecting hidden failures. And these are typically associated with protective functions. Think about pressure safety valves, trip transmitters, and the like. This type of equipment won't be required to function until something else has failed. And that means under normal operating conditions, you will not know whether this equipment is still functional, i.e. the failure mode is hidden. And since these failures are hidden, you'll need to find them before you can rely on that equipment to protect you. It's quite simple, really. Now, it's important to realize that failure finding maintenance tasks do not prevent failure. They're aimed at detecting it. And once you've detected it, you'll then have to repair the failure you found. Failure finding maintenance is conducted at fixed time intervals, typically derived from legislation or risk-based approaches. Right, our next maintenance type is condition-based maintenance. Now, as we saw in the earlier lesson, most failure modes are not age-related. However, most failure modes do give some sort of warning that they are in a process of occurring or about to occur. So if we can find evidence that something is in the early stages of failure, it may be possible to take action or prevent it from failing completely um, or minimize, avoid the consequence of it. 
So condition-based maintenance as a strategy therefore looks for physical evidence that a failure is occurring or is about to occur. Thinking of condition-based maintenance in this way shows that it has broader applications outside of the condition monitoring techniques that are often only associated with rotating equipment. Condition-based maintenance is much more than the typical vibration monitoring that a lot of companies do. Now, it's important to realize that condition-based maintenance as a maintenance strategy does not reduce the likelihood of a failure occurring. Instead, condition-based maintenance is aimed at intervening before the failure occurs on the premise that it's more economical and should have less of an impact on availability. In other words, condition monitoring does not directly fix machines, nor does condition monitoring directly stop failures. Condition monitoring lets you find problems before they become a failure. You then need a follow-up task to make an intervention. Now, up until recently, when people spoke about predictive maintenance, this was essentially a synonym for condition-based maintenance, especially in, in the North America. But things have changed. In my view, with the advent of artificial intelligence, much lower cost of equipment sensors and machine learning, there's really a difference appearing between predictive maintenance and what some people might call prescriptive maintenance and the more conventional condition-based maintenance, at least in my view. See, I see predictive maintenance or prescriptive maintenance, as some call it, as an extension, a more advanced approach to condition-based maintenance. And so predictive maintenance is a type of maintenance where we use potentially many process parameters gained from online sensors to determine if our equipment is moving away from stable operating conditions and heading towards failure. And sometimes it may not even be a direct condition measurement. So this does mean that predictive maintenance is only effective when you really understand the failure mode you're dealing with and you have various direct or indirect measurements that you can use to determine if a failure is becoming imminent. It is also something that is typically only applied to more complex failure modes or failure modes with fairly significant consequences because of the costs and the complexity involved of setting up effective predictive maintenance. All right, risk-based maintenance. Risk-based maintenance is when you use a risk assessment methodology to assign your scarce maintenance resources to those assets that carry the most risk in case of a failure. And remember that risk is the product of likelihood and consequence. So as a result, equipment that has a higher risk and a very high consequence of failure will be subject to more frequent maintenance and inspection. Low-risk equipment may be maintained at a much lower frequency and possibly with a smaller scope of work. When you implement a risk-based maintenance process, effectively, you have reduced the total risk of failure across your plant in the most economical way. Risk-based maintenance is essentially preventive maintenance where the frequency and the scope of the maintenance activity is continuously optimized based on the findings from testing or inspection and a thorough risk assessment. So some examples of risk-based maintenance that you're probably familiar with would be risk-based inspection as applied to static equipment like vessels and piping or tanks and even pressure relief valves, or the risk-based approach that is used for testing of safety instrumented functions. Next on our list, deferred corrective maintenance. And that is corrective maintenance that focuses on repairing or replacing equipment or a component, either as a result of an anticipated failure or as a result of a deliberate run to failure strategy. The key difference between deferred corrective maintenance and emergency maintenance is that deferred corrective maintenance can be delayed, it can be deferred, by a period of time to allow you to properly plan and schedule the work. Emergency maintenance, on the other hand, is corrective maintenance that is so urgent that it breaks into your frozen weekly schedule, and you do have one, don't you? It is so urgent that it upsets your plans and schedules and typically throws everything into disarray. Some people thrive in this type of environment and often get treated as heroes when they've worked 16 hours non-stop to get production back online. But when it comes to the road to reliability, it really is a dead end. Emergency maintenance is the one and only maintenance type that you really want to avoid as much as possible. And in fact, world-class organizations ensure that less than 2% of their total maintenance workload is, main is emergency maintenance. All right, so that's a brief review of the different types of maintenance. We'll delve into a lot more detail, including some examples per type of maintenance, 
in module three. But it's important to understand these different types of maintenance before we go further with discussing some other basic concepts like failure modes, failure mode characteristics, or the all important PF curve. And when you look at this chart and study it a bit more and start thinking about how you may apply some of these types of maintenance in your organization, you'll start to realize that indeed there is really no such thing as the best type of maintenance. You need to use a mixture of these different types of maintenance to create an effective and efficient preventive maintenance program that manages the overall consequences of potential equipment failures efficiently and effectively. And it does so in a way that it aligns with the overall organizational objectives. There's no point in trying to introduce advanced predictive maintenance strategies if you run a relatively low complex facility where the consequence of failure is not very significant. You can download this chart as a separate PDF in the resources section of this lesson. So you can print it out on a large poster, for example, when you're doing workshops to optimize your PMs. Now, of course, it's also included in the PDF file with all the slides of this lesson. And before we wrap up this lesson, I do want to touch on a few more phrases that people often use to refer to as types of maintenance. Things like planned and unplanned maintenance or proactive versus reactive maintenance. Now, these concepts are typically poorly defined and there are really no clear international definitions and that can lead to a lot of debate and a lot of confusion. So in the next couple of minutes, I'll give you my view on these phrases so we understand how I look at this and there should be less chance of confusion as we go through the rest of the course. All right, so first, planned versus unplanned maintenance. Now, people who know me and know my content will know that I'm quite big on maintenance planning and scheduling. As in my view, it's one of the cornerstones of an effective and efficient maintenance organization. So I don't see planned maintenance as the same as preventive maintenance like some industry resources do. Instead, I see planned maintenance as work that has been planned, i.e. properly prepared so that you can execute it efficiently. Planned maintenance can be planned preventive maintenance or planned corrective maintenance, or to be precise, planned deferred maintenance. Any maintenance that has not been planned, i.e. properly prepared, is therefore unplanned maintenance. And once again, that could be unplanned preventive maintenance or unplanned corrective maintenance. Where you need to get to is that the only unplanned maintenance you have is emergency maintenance. You know, the issues, the defects, the, the problems that are so urgent that they have to be addressed immediately and bypass the normal planning and changing process. Everything else should be planned maintenance. All right, so we can summarize. Planned maintenance is work that has been prepared in advance by a planner. All your preventive maintenance should be planned maintenance. And almost all of your corrective maintenance should be planned maintenance. Unplanned maintenance is work that is executed without advanced preparation. This should really only be the most urgent corrective maintenance, i.e. emergency maintenance. And emergency maintenance should be less than 2% of your total workload. Now what about the old chestnut of reactive versus proactive maintenance? Some people will really imply preventive maintenance when they talk about proactive maintenance. And that is very confusing in my view. Um, that's a view that's quite common in North America. North America really often talks about proactive maintenance when they really mean preventive maintenance in terms of my definition. So I prefer to use the phrases of reactive maintenance and proactive maintenance more as a differentiation of your maintenance culture. Are you chasing failures or are you continuously improving? If it's the first, you're clearly reactive. If it's the latter, then you're proactive. So when I talk about proactive maintenance or reactive maintenance, here's what I mean. Proactive maintenance refers to a maintenance culture that is focused on continuously improving. Preventive maintenance is executed on time. Defects, when detected, are eliminated. And improvements are made by all. You may not have everything in place. You may not be world class yet but you are proactive in the sense you're trying to do the right things and you're trying to improve. When I talk about reactive maintenance, I refer to a maintenance culture that is dominated by failures. The organization is caught in a vicious cycle of equipment breakdown. Firefighting is the norm and there is no time, no appetite, no desire 
no drive for improvement. So looking back at our chart of different maintenance types. Reactive maintenance is essentially when you have large amounts of emergency maintenance or breakdown maintenance. Equipment breaks over and over and over and you simply find yourself running from fire to fire trying to extinguish the latest fire before the next one starts. Proactive maintenance, on the other hand, can cover a large amount of different maintenance types. Proactive maintenance indicates you are in control. You're doing preventive maintenance to manage and mitigate the impact of potential failure modes. And yes, in a proactive maintenance environment, you will most certainly be doing corrective maintenance. It is just not cost effective to try and prevent all failures. And so you will accept a certain amount of corrective maintenance. And yes, you will also have a small amount of emergency maintenance coming through. But it should be rare, well managed, and the focus should be making sure it doesn't reoccur. So when you look at it like this, you can see why I prefer to deem reactive maintenance versus proactive maintenance as much more of an assessment of the maintenance culture and not really as a type of maintenance. Now, the last thing I want to say before I wrap up is, a, is really actually a simple request. Now that we've been through these definitions, please use them. Precision of language is important as it helps to reduce confusion and debate. So print off a chart of the different types of maintenance, put it on the wall and start using that terminology. All right, that brings me to the end of this first lesson. In this lesson, we talked about how all maintenance is either preventive maintenance or corrective maintenance. And we saw that we have multiple types of preventive maintenance or corrective maintenance. And the different types of preventive maintenance we talked about included time-based maintenance, failure-finding maintenance, condition-based maintenance, predictive maintenance, and risk-based maintenance. And we also talked about two different types of corrective maintenance, deferred maintenance and emergency maintenance. And although we didn't really discuss it in detail in this lesson, I still want to repeat the key point that there is no best type of maintenance. You need to match the right type of maintenance with the characteristics of the failure mode you're dealing with and with your organizational objectives. And that is something we'll work through in much more detail as the course progresses. But it's just really important that you keep that in your mind going forward. There is no single best type of maintenance. See you in the next lesson.